was born right here in this community and I grew up to observe a whole lot of things that we are happening in this community. Before OEM, I knew exactly how we've been living here because I grew up here and life was beautiful then. My father is a fisherman. We all stay, my mother, just put the banga in the fire. I'm coming back. We just run the backyard. Before you will see, we just start with fish. This is the Niger Delta, a place rich with so much mangroves, swamps, oil, gas. It's a place that is so rich with resources that you will want to be jealous of. It's a place where every developer, every company wants to reside because they have life so easy. No wonder so many oil companies have come in to tap up the resources of the Niger Delta in Nigeria. Sometimes I see many, many vehicles come with clay pan. We are as a company are coming on. They want to open company in our land. So everybody was happy, all the father were happy. They came, they will give, we see quite mad with Shingon. Give me the children, we'll be happy, Shingon. We're happy that good things are coming. That was our aspiration, that was our hope. By 1993, Ogoni has contributed over 300 billion dollars to the Nigerian state through its oil. The prize should be bountiful, actually. It should be something of celebration to such communities. But the story I'm about to tell you is about the tragic price that communities have to pay in the Niger Delta for oil exploration by international oil companies. Welcome to the Niger Delta, a place that should be a place of riches, but has become a place of tragedy. Because of the oil exploration, the crops that we are planting, I am a farmer, we do not do well again as before. We don't have a very good harvest again as the olden days because they are exploiting those oils. You know those things, God know why he kept it on the soil like that. A bunch of plantain, look at what I plant for eight months now, see, see, what, see what it brought to me, see what it brought to me. Not even, it's, not, it's not even up to, 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 for, for a human being to even eat. Before, if you have asked cassava, cassava is so come and looking good. Some look like yams, big tubers of yam. But now, if you have asked cassava, sometimes you might not even get any fruit. You might not get any product. Animals themselves, like before we breed, this thing, we need to see again because of the gas. This oil spray don't kill our crops. Eh? Even the flaring of gas, they flare that gas in very close proximity to human habitation. And when gas is flared that way, it's in the suit. Soot that falls in the form of acid rain also has a devastating effect on the health, the skin, the land, river, and everything. It has caused us a lot of um, diseases that is even unnamed. We don't know where it's coming from. Younger ones are dying. Last Saturday, we buried one of our, our brother uh, by name, Kenneth. And, you know, we couldn't even tell what killed them. So if you live here and go to some fishing camps, even in Tobini, I used to go there. I went there the first day. The people are sick. Children are sick. The aged, they are sick. Because of this very 
oil spillages. Even when we were coming, I saw the water was oily. So it's disturbing people. Nowadays, we have a lot of people blind. As I'm talking with you, one of my eyes is being affected. My right eye. Go to some of the houses. You will see crack of war. Because if you see this flare now, if you're going towards this ending, after the break, after the bridge now, you will see this, there is two flare there. Those two flares, sometimes when they vibrate, you cannot stay inside your house. And it causes a lot of crack in the building. The ground just broke into pieces in the dust bins. Just opened and water came out. And second one, the second one happened, the gas just burn all the bush, the bush that close to the environment. And I do, as it will still happen that the ones that I witnessed, those that went to go and dry tapioca, even some of their loads got burned, even some of their sustained injury during the, the hiring of the gas fire. Sometimes community will call that this thing is happening or like this, like this. I will call straight and they will tell me, Maurice, our people are on the way. Thank you very much for the information. And that's how I, I worked some time, uh, maybe it's about some four or five years or so with Ajib, not Shell. Shell will always blame you, always look for a way out and all of that. Now, Shell sent us a statement about their subsidiary in Nigeria saying it operates to the same technical standards as other Shell companies. It continues, illegal actions by third parties cause the vast majority of oil spills in the Niger Delta, such as crude oil theft and sabotage. However, regardless of the cause, the joint venture responds quickly to clean up when spills originate from its facilities. Reclaim our environment. You've seen how it's been dilapidated. First of all, to start with, we need to do cleanup. We have to do thorough cleanup and deliberate um, infusing of those natural habitats that we used to have. Possibly we can even plant mangroves. We're also saying that. The entire Niger Delta that is heavily polluted should be assessed. There should be an environmental audit of the entire Niger Delta. I want to see a road that you have built, apart from the small snaky track that your truck passes. I want to see your website telling me these are the number of scholarships we have given to people. You know, don't tell us to come and say this. Let us see a community. Let it be a tourist attraction that this is the community or company they were here and they did it. Nigeria needs to protect our citizens. Nigeria needs to give confidence back to the people and to know that the people, the citizens, are the owners of, of government. They are the employers of those who are in government. We are trying to amend the Nostra Establishment uh, Act to give them more powers to put uh, punitive measures in place for the oil companies that are responsible for the oil spillage that is going on in Nigeria. We need to have a stronger legal framework in place to protect uh, the environment from oil spills. We are demanding climate justice. And when do we want it? We want it now. The only way forward for the region is to continue to raise the consciousness of the people to resist environmental injustice in the United States.